great games on lesser known systems. I'm not talking about Sony and Nintendo or even Atari and Commodore. I'm talking about games and game systems that are much more obscure, the ones that get overlooked. And today I'm looking at the scheme on the PC-88. The PC-88 is not a name that's familiar to most Western gamers, and that's no surprise, as this machine was never very successful outside of Japan. Part of NEC's large home computer range, it was big in its home territory, these systems accounting for some 45% of the Japanese home computer market at one point. It was briefly marketed in Europe and the USA, but it didn't make much of an impact, and it remained very much a Japanese phenomenon. In some respects, this was a very typical 8-bit home computer, and there were a number of different models released with different capabilities, later models being quite significantly expanded. It came on the market in 1981 and it was based around a Z80 processor, similar to what you would find in a ZX Spectrum or Amstrad CPC, although in later versions this was quite a souped up Z80 running at 8 MHz. The base model had 64 kilobytes of RAM, some of the later models would have 192 or even 512, and the storage medium for the most part was the good old 5.25 inch floppy drive. The graphics were quite high resolution, much higher than most Western 8 bit systems, with various modes including 640x400 in monochrome mode or 640x200 with 8 colours out of a palette of 512. It was pretty common for Japanese computers of this era to have quite high resolution at least in comparison to western machines because of the need to display those complex Japanese characters legibly. As for the sound, well the original model was stuck with a simple monophonic beeper, but later models were equipped with much more sophisticated FM sound synthesizers, giving these systems very impressive sound capabilities, more like what you'd expect from 16 bit consoles or even PC sound cards. Now being a popular home system, there were a lot of games released for the PC-88 range. As you might expect, being a computer and not a console, a lot of these games were very text heavy RPGs, adventure games and being Japanese visual novels and the like, many of them veering deep into hentai territory. The high amount of text means that most of these games were pretty much unplayable to non-Japanese speakers. There was however still quite a lot of good action games available, lighter on the text and much more accessible to us gaijin, including many ports of well-known games from other systems and some system exclusives. One of these exclusives, released in 1988, is The Scheme. Quite what the scheme from the title constitutes is never revealed, but the setting is very much your typical 80s computer game high fantasy type thing. I dare say there is a backstory, but I wasn't able to find out what it is. The gameplay is probably best described as a platforming action RPG with a heavy focus on exploration and run and gun style shooty combat. Both Castlevania and Metroid are pretty clear inspirations for this game, and it borrows elements from both in a way that you might even call an early example of Metroidvania. There are five areas in the game, and the goal in each one is to defeat the boss and essentially unlock the next part of the map. This starts out as a pretty simple linear path in the first level, but things get much more intricate as the game progresses, with later areas opening up into complex mazes without a clear route through them. Orbs dropped by enemies refill your energy meter and increase your force level, increasing the power of your attack. Icons found throughout the game will increase your total energy capacity Metroid style and give you instant weapon and level upgrades. The graphics are of course hugely defined by the limitations of the system, but I do like them quite a lot, they make good use of the system's abilities. Often quite detailed and pretty quirky, they compare pretty favourably with those from other 8-bit computers, a step up from what you might see on the C64 and certainly from the ZX Spectrum. The music really is quite special, kind of typical 80s chiptune stuff, but hugely well done, created by the well-renowned game composer Yuzo Koshiro, one of the greats really, whose works include everything from Streets of Rage to Kid Icarus Uprising. Interestingly though, there are two separate soundtracks, both with entirely different compositions, for the two different sound chips that various models of the PC-88 had, an unusual feature in a game. If you're using one of the later models of PC-88, you'll be able to choose between the two. The game isn't without its flaws, the large linear areas are fun to explore to begin with, but do get very samey and confusing later on, without much variety within each area. And whilst it does control pretty well, it doesn't have the same fluidly satisfying action and well-focused game design as you might expect from someone like 
Konami, for example. The game seems to encourage you to grind energy and force, then cheese your way through hard bosses and difficult areas rather than use any finesse. It isn't as punishingly hard as many of its peers, you do have infinite continues, and being a disc-based game, you can save your progress. Rage quitting may be your biggest enemy here, as it does get pretty frustrating in parts. Despite these issues, it's still a good package, with a blend of gameplay elements that work well together. Yeah, it borrows from other games, but it adds more than enough of its own unique stuff. Had this game ever appeared on any other platforms, maybe the NES even, I suspect it would be much better known. As it is, locked away on the PC-88, it remains extremely obscure, outside of Japan at least. It was never ported to any other platforms and there's certainly not been any sort of virtual console release or modern remake. The PC-88, or at least an emulator, remains the only way to play this game. Is it worth getting hold of the original hardware for the authentic experience? Well, only if you have very deep pockets. A working PC-88 could easily set you back £300 or $500, and that's for a fairly distressed, unboxed model, and you'll have to pay shipping on top of that as well. As for the game itself, well, I don't actually know how much that's going to cost you. I've yet to see it on eBay or even Yahoo Auctions Japan, but it's probably not going to be cheap, with many PC-88 games being priced in the hundreds. They're not all that expensive, but this is a pretty sought-after game, from what I understand, so it's probably going to be in the higher end of the price range. Sadly, emulation may be your best bet if you do want to try this game out. Thank you for watching, thank you for getting to the end. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to gently prod that like button, and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this kind of thing.